Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a return worth having. When I begin every audio cast this way, I am trying to remind both young people and old people, the number of people who allegedly listen to this audio cast, of what is important in the world. You see, if you made a choice for the right person in the world, then you know what is correct to do in life. If you've chosen the wrong life partner, then you create in your world children that don't know what is right from wrong. This evening, I have been walking around, sort of giving myself some additional energy because I slept through most of the heat of the day, which is what a person who is traveling and wants to stay alive in the heat of a day will do. They will disclose themselves in no way. They will simply do their rights, which is to get out of the heat, get under a shelter, and literally sleep away the day. Once the heat index has decreased and once the temperatures have dropped, it's a much more palatable evening to go to find food, to go to have conversations with people in the community who have a mood to do so, and openly I received a marvelous dinner, or late lunch if you will, from a local restaurant who was kind in what they did for me. Not only did they pay nothing for me and they allowed me to pay for myself and to do what I needed to do for myself, but I sat outside their restaurant and they said, sent a young man out to ask me if I'd like to come inside to just sit and eat. That was a very kind and generous thing for someone to do in the name of customer service. They also asked me if there was anything else I needed to see if I wanted some water or other things, and that was very kind, and they very generously donated some lemonade to an old guy, which was, again, very generous and kind. What I'm always amazed about uh, in the world today is how people don't think about what their responsibilities are today in raising young people. I have experienced plenty of young white men of Catholic origin on a campus that sort of promotes Catholicism. And what I mean by that is that people don't think about what is and isn't their lawful right. You see, it is not your lawful right to pursue anyone with too much gaze at night. It is not your lawful right to try to solicit someone at night for a, well, match, or a lighter, or a cigar, or a cigarette. This is a childish thing to do. It says that you don't want to use your own cash to purchase things that cost you a paltry dollar. Most places do sell lighters that cost a dollar. Certainly, you have a dollar to purchase that. Most people would say that about me when I was in great struggle. It wasn't a depression. It wasn't a lack of supervision. It was a matter of fact that people were not interested in participating in helping someone get out of struggle. You see, the kindest thing that anyone can do when you see someone in struggle is not to point them out and not to complain about them and not to make insults to them as if they know their person's life. The kindest thing for someone to do is do one of three things. First, you can walk by and ignore it and pretend that Lord God above has not seen you do that. Much like the Samaritan's story in the Bible about how certain people walked by the injured person and did nothing at all. At the same time, you can be a paltry thief and try to size up what the person owns and see if there's something you might steal, but again, Jesus Christ is looking at you, or Muhammad is looking at you, or Allah is looking down on you, and I have to ask you, what gives you the right to do that today? In the world today, we have much to do is true. The third and appropriate thing for any person who's a follower of any sort of faith is to simply say, how do you do? My name is XYZ, whatever that might be for you, or what God named thee. And when I make these silly little rhymes, it's not to make up time, it's to make you pay attention to your fucking life. Because if you're going to give someone a paltry five cents, like a Jewish boy tried to gift me when I was on campus, I wanted to ask him how much his life was worth. Not only was it an insult to me because I don't collect pocket change from people as a principal of a man who's a business mind and a networking heart and a community servant of sorts. But I could not believe that the child then went back into his alleged home, came back outside and tried to provide me an apple as if that would satisfy my hunger. Again, two times he insulted me, but he was too immature to understand the insult to me. Much like the college frat boy who was eating pizza with his friends thought it was appropriate to throw pizza at my head when I politely declined his offer of some of his food because I had already 
possibly been in a very good mood and eaten plenty for me. You see, what I see in young white men is a desire to be powerful when they have not learned what it means to be a man in this world. Most women don't know what it means to be a man in the world in terms of the world of men. They claim and they state that we are debilitating them, we are taking away from them, we are not paying them enough, which is technically factually true. But at the same time, I'd like to know whether or not the same volume of work is and productivity is handled by them, or by me, or by you. You see, in life, people make a living based on how they socially network. If they don't appropriately socially network, if they're a flirt, or if they're a jerk, or if they're a matron, or if they're a bitch, they usually don't make a good living. You see, people who are marvelous networkers, who are full of themselves, might make a good living for a time, but at some point, people are going to be out of time for them. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about the world, and my understanding is people who are generally in a good mood, people who smile, people who interact, people who don't insult others, people who are keeping their life in their own realms on track, usually do pretty well for themselves and for their family, but there's always a point where their career times out. And at that point, they have to look at their life and go, okay, my career is timed out, my industry is overtaxed, there's way too much competition in this community, I am really not relaxed in what I'm doing, and maybe, just maybe, I have to take my skill sets, my incredible skill sets, and take them into another paltry industry where I can use the same skills in a different way, or perhaps I need to look at some of my hobbies that would rule the day. What I find amazing is how little that people who've been in the industry for a long time are willing to give up their fame and what they call their fortune to try something new. And yet when they hear about it, they say, okay, sounds good, show me it all. You show it to them and then they walk off and they do it with someone else too. You see, it is a lie they've told themselves to steal that intellectual property, to steal that gift from God, and they should have done it with the person that they learned about it from. But there's always that liar, there's always that cheat, there's always that symbol of what a man is not today. And the beginning of this cast was talking about what is a man today. What is a paltry man today? In other words, should your child be mocking a homeless person with their friends, walking off a parking lot unattended in their high school years, going back to probably a hotel where they stayed because they were here playing or getting ready for a ball game tomorrow? And I sit there and I wonder, where are the parent chaperones? Where is the coach? Where is the legal liaison for these children who should be teaching them how to handle themselves the best and the most? In life, we have moments of time to teach children the right rules of the world. And sometimes I might have overstepped with some of my kanji camp classroom students, but most of the time, unless they were an overindulged, overindulged child or a homeschooled child, it was too sensitive for the world. Most of the time, the young people really appreciated what they learned and valued as they departed my classroom after many years of my service to them and their learning from me, that they gained a lot more from the classroom than just Japanese. Now, if that's me tooting my horn, then that's the truth. But when a 20-year-old or less tries to tell me my life in two seconds flat of their assessment of my life, I get rather offended. Because what I want to say to them is, have you had a wife of 20 years? Did you lose your wife in any way? Have you had a son who lived into his 30s and did you lose that son today? Have you built a business practice that served a lot of people and earned you a living so that you had family days on Friday and openly? Can I ask you, what is your hourly living? Because my guess is you're still living on mother's and father's dime. So the next time you want to insult me, stop and look at your life and realize that you too would be homeless and without any concept of what to do other than to call your friends, borrow, beg, and steal time with them so that you would not be out in the freezing cold. But when a man is in serving mode and always taking care of other people, even to the detriment of his business where he cared for his late father while siblings went off and did their jobs and had a lot of complaints to say along the sidelines and literally ruined the day and relationships for him, I have to say, you know, prove to me that you're a man. And once you've proven to me that you've been able to satisfy a wife and keep her content, keep her happy, keep her fed, keep her sheltered, keep her clothed for 20 years, and once you've done the same practically for a child, then you can talk to me about being a man. 
and then you can talk to me about what it means to be a grandfather of which I am. You see, in life we have to teach men what it means to be a man, and a man, regardless of his predilection, regardless of his particular addiction to whichever side of the coin he likes, he must be willing and able to make a living and an earning in order to keep his spouse or wife. 